What's good? It's your boy Daylight. You're now tuned in with RealFansRealTalk.com. Bye, y'all. How were your um, interactions with Phil? Um, obviously, you, you get him later in, in his coaching career. How, how were your interactions with him, and did you feel he was a player's coach the way he's always been described uh, by most guys? Uh, Phil Jackson. Um, I'm, I want to go on record by saying I love playing for Phil Jackson. Um, uh, just a, a real quick story. My um, first year trying to make the team in 04 preseason, uh, we in, were in Hawaii, and Phil Jackson calls me everything but smush. You know, uh, he never called me smush. He called me smash. He called me smuck. He sm called me smooch. He called me whatever, whatever sounded like smush. That's what he called me, but he never called me smush. Um, and, that, and I thought that was pretty funny and pretty cool, but um, my, my, my interaction with Phil Jackson, it wasn't he's – a, he's a very – to himself kind of guy, not very, you know, he's not an extrovert, you know, he's, he's an introvert. So he, he wasn't very outspoken, um, but he, he was a uh, motivator. And that's what he did. He, uh, he uh, is a very comfortable coach uh, for players to play for, and he motivated guys to play to their best, best abilities. And I love playing for Phil Jackson. Was it, uh, was it hard for you to learn the triangle offense? You know, I really don't understand how people don't know how to play in a triangle offense. Like, I picked it up just like that. It was one of the easiest offense to pick up. And if you get five guys out there to play it right, everybody on the court can average double figures. It's just, it's just, it's just common sense basketball. You know, you pass it this way, you cut that way. When I guess when they were trying to do it in, uh, in, in New York and it just wasn't working out, what do you think it was that was going wrong? Uh, too many guys that didn't buy into the system. You know, you have to have the right pieces to play in the triangle after guys who aren't about themselves. Like, I'll tell you one, like the point, I'll just speak from the point guard position. They had, you had uh, Calderon on here, right? Yeah. He's more of a, he's more of a playmaking point guard. He's more of a, you know, a dribble, get into the gaps, you know, drive and dish, get to the basket. If you watch him, he's not very, uh, he, he, he's not a, a system player, you know, so he didn't, he didn't buy into the, you know, okay, I can play in this offense without dribbling a basketball. Like you can play in that offense without dribbling a basketball, but you know, he, he, he was who he was. He's a, a, a playmaking uh, point guard that wasn't willing to change. Uh, D Rose, like another playmaking point guard, you know, that offense is, takes the ball out of people's hands pretty much. It takes, it takes away from people's strengths and they weren't willing to, to uh, give up what what they the only part of their game that they had. Were there ever um, any strange stories or analogies he used to motivate you guys? Because we heard about him in, in episode three. You know, uh, making a comparison of, of Rodman to someone from a um, Native American tribe, and we've always heard stories of him just kind of being like that coach whisperer who, who can always trigger the right thing to motivate you. Was there ever any intriguing yeah. stories he ever used to, to motivate you? I don't remember, uh, honestly. The only thing I remember um, us doing was before uh, it was in the, in the playoffs when we were going up, going up against the Phoenix Suns, and we were going over film, uh, breakdown, the breakdown of their offense and defense. And um, he had us in a little film room, and he, you know, he said he wanted us to meditate real quick. So he had us all like sit up, proper posture, you know, put our hands in our lap. You know, he had us breathing deep. Had our eyes closed. He was, and he th they started talking in his monotone voice. Think about the air, and you're sitting by the water, and you can hear the water crashing along the seashore. And I was just like, okay, all right. I mean, but he did that to kind of. <laughs> it's funny, but you know, he did that to kind of. You know, he wanted people to be focused on the game plan. He didn't want you know people thinking about families or you know what happened you know, before they got to practice or what they're cooking tonight or their wives or their children. And that's the reason why he did that. So people can actually focus and, you know, uh, keen into 
the, the defensive schemes that we were about to get, uh, that we wanted to do in this playoff series. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Real talk, we as real as you thought. 